Welcome to the National Head Start Conference Live. My name is Ron Schwali, and I'm here to get our blood pumping and get us ready to learn with some yoga latte. NSA has an exciting few days planned for us. Let's get warmed up together and kick it off. You Head Start folk are always an amazing audience in person, and I'm glad to see that you brought this same enthusiasm to this virtual experience. For anyone watching this warm up on Facebook this morning, you know that you can still register for the conference and get access to all the engaging sessions in store at go.nhsa.org forward slash virtual. One more time, go.nhsa.org forward slash virtual. Awesome, I'll show it again at the end. Now, let's get started. So what we're gonna do in Yogarati first is we're gonna get our bodies warmed up by doing something called the laser beam game. Now, I brought a laser with me. And this laser goes wall, 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 wall. And this laser is designed to chop off your head. So as much as you want to participate in this program, feel free to do it as little or as lot. I like the way you're standing. I like the way you're standing. I like the way my buddy Scruffy's standing. So everybody ready? Wall, wall, wall. It's going to chop off your head. Do what you want to do. Wall, 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 wall. Nice. Wall, 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 wall. Awesome. I saw some people, I can see some of the people in the background. Some of them are like, oh, I don't see your laser. Other people are like, oh. I saw one person go, Shh. awesome job. I love the way you're using your imagination. Let's do it again. Ready? Awesome. I put another laser with me. And this laser goes, and this one's going to chop off your feet. What are you gonna do about it? Ready? Nice job. Awesome. Go jump up a little duck in. Good job. Give yourself a little round of applause. Awesome. Little duck jumping. I like that. Nice job, awesome. Give yourself a round of applause. All right, now, since we're a little winded, we're gonna do something called big belly breathing. So I spent a lot of time eating pizza and ice cream to make sure that I can give you a nice visual aid so that you can see big belly. Anybody buying this? I didn't think so. So when you do big belly breathing, what you do is you put your hands on your chest and then you put one hand on your belly first. We wanna see where we breathe. So some of you are gonna breathe like this, some of you are going to breathe like this, and then some of you are going to do a combination of both. So for now, take three breaths and just see, are you a shoulder chest breather or are you a belly breather? And it works better if you do with your eyes closed. Ready? Three breaths at your own pace. Ready, set, go. Awesome. All right. Now, before I ask the question, how many of you feel just a little more relaxed after three breaths? When was the last time you took a breath for yourself, except when you do the surprise look to that one kid that does all that stuff that he always does on purpose to get your attention? You don't want a breath I'm talking about. The one you go, oh, Joey, how could you do that? Even though he just did it 15 times a day before, like you're really surprised. So now, how many people felt like they were breathing in and out more with their shoulders? Okay, how many people felt like they're breathing in and out more with their stomach? How many people felt like they're breathing in and out more than calm? They're like, I don't know what that was. Okay, what about this? Now we're going to focus on intentionally using our stomach muscles. Now I promise they're under there. Some of you may have a nice protective layer like I do because you never know what you're going to get shot in the stomach with a cannonball, right? So what I want you to do is intentionally Use your stomach muscles and breathe in and push your stomach muscles out. Ready? Like this. So make your belly big. Er, and then when you breathe out, you're actually going to use your stomach muscles and you're going to pull your belly in and you're going to breathe all that air out. You know, pull your stomach muscles in like the first time you go onto the beach. Oh, nothing. Okay, so ready? Breathe in. Make your belly big. Er, and then breathe out. Make your belly small. Er. Breathe in, make your belly big, er. And then breathe out, make your belly small, er. 
So that is your belly breathing. So if you do any exercises or warm-ups or anything this morning and you feel yourself getting a little winded, instead of trying to catch your breath like that, try to intentionally take a big belly breath in and breathe out. I also teach this to my little ones because what I do is I tell them to take a big belly breath in and breathe out and keep them focusing on doing that. And then what I'll do is after the third one, I'll go like this, breathe in, breathe out. And then I'll start to pretend like I'm going to sleep. Breathe in, breathe out. And then what I'll do is I'll do like this, breathe in. And then all the kids yell, wake up! And I go, oh, oh, I felt so relaxed so much when I was breathing that I fell asleep. So that's a good way to teach your kids how to do belly breathing. All right, awesome. Now after we warmed up, let's do some stretching. So first we're gonna do is we're gonna roll our head around nice and easy. If you're doing this seated or standing, whatever do, do your best. Ready? Then go the other way. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna work on baby birds. So baby birds are when you're looking up in the air and a mama bird is feeding you. So you're going like this. Like a little baby bird. Everyone try that. Ready? So mama bird's going to feed you some food go like this. Or make whatever bird you, noise you think it does. Now, what this actually does is this works your sternocleoid mastoid muscles, your SEM. Ever see one of those turkeys that they have that gobble neck thing going on? And if you happen to notice that might be happening to you, this is going to help tune up these muscles so it pulls the skin back. Oh, now you're interested in doing it. I see. So I made it about you, and now you're engaged. Ever do that with the kids? Try to tell them to do something, and you haven't figured out a way how to get them to be engaged to do it? It's a little different, right? All right, let's try it one more time. So big belly breath in. Let everybody go, um. Oh. Um, and feel those muscles work. Um, 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 and big belly breath out. <sighs> Just like that. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to stretch our neck. Anybody ever have any tight neck ever? Oh, everybody? Okay, got it. So what we're going to do is we're going to stretch our neck like this, but instead of the instinct or the thing that we're taught to grab onto our neck and pull, we're actually going to do a little John Travolta action. So turn your head over to the left, just like this, and then you're going to take the opposite arm and you're going to point 45 degrees this direction. And then when you point 45 degrees that direction, the more you point, the more you're going to feel a stretch in your neck. So everybody breathe in and point with that finger 45 degrees down. <sighs> Enjoy some belly breaths if you want. They're free. And you'll feel that stretch all the way going down. Let's do it one more time. Point 45 degrees this way and point 45 degrees down just like that. Awesome, and relax your neck. Let's go the other way. So everybody, we're gonna relax our neck this way, just like that. Feel that tightness already going on in your neck. So point 45 degrees, little John Travolta action going on, and point this way, and then point 45 degrees in the opposite direction. And remember, I gotta remember to breathe too sometimes. And point 45 degrees and feel the stretching going all through your neck one more time. Let's contract the muscle a little bit, and then we're gonna point 45 degrees this way and stretch and stretch and stretch. And if some of you are lucky enough to have a nice chunk of fat right over here to, to cushion your neck, then good for you. All you people with those chiseled jaws, whatever. Okay, and now that we feel our neck is a little bit better, we're gonna roll it around again one more time just to make sure. Last thing we're gonna do, take your hands, put it behind the back of your head like this. Some of you may know this position, might be a little familiar. Anyway, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold on to the back of your head like this, and then you're just gonna tuck your chin in, and then breathe in and lift your head up, up, and breathe out, and tuck your chin in, just like that. If you feel this going down just a little bit part of your upper back, that's okay. If you feel this shooting all the way down to your lower back, what do you think your body's telling you? It's telling you to stretch. And this is going to be videotaped so that you can have this access. And there's also going to be handouts available for this stretching. So don't worry. I just want you to focus on your breathing. So breathe in. Breathe out. Tuck your chin in. And then just pull your head down and see how far that tightness goes all the way to your back or to your lower back or to your butt cheeks. All right, good. Okay. Let's loosen up our shoulders a little bit. And we're going to go for a swim. And everybody say, hi, seahorse. Everybody say hi, chicken. Chicken in the water? Everyone say hi, Patrick. 
Patrick, oh, 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 hi, SpongeBob, and oh, there's a shark. Everybody swim, everybody swim, everybody swim. Go swim, swim. There's a shark behind you. Everyone backwards, everyone backwards. Everybody fly to the water. Shh. And let's look for a place to land. Everybody superhero landing. Shh. Nice job. All right, we're gonna stretch out our sides. Let me just fix my do. And we're gonna go this way, and I want you to feel all the stretching in these muscles. When was the last time you actually got a real good stretch like that? So everybody, you're gonna go this way, and everyone go ha, ha, ha. And if you feel that stretching going on over there, let's do the other side, everyone go he, he, he. All right, and let's go this way, everyone go ho, ho, ho. What are you, Santa Claus is? Somebody owes me a train, is a joke that the kids usually laugh at. And everybody go who, who, who. What are you, a bunch of owls? I don't give a hoot. And feel free to steal all my material. All right, and now we're gonna do is we're going to stretch our chest out. If you love ice cream, say, I love you ice cream. Nice. If you love pizza, say, I love you pizza. If you love all that extra weight that you've been putting on since you've been quarantining yourself, say, I love myself. Listen, things happen, you gotta do what you gotta do. You'll lose a quick chasing after the kids, don't worry. All right, now let's create some energy. It's all about the energy that we give to each other. So take your hands like this. You're going to rub your hands together. Try to cup them like I'm doing right here. So when you're rubbing your hands together, you're creating friction, you're creating heat, you're creating energy. All right, now what you do, pull your hands apart and just like that. Pull them apart and hold them. See if you feel anything between your hands. How many of you feel some sort of magnetic pull or a pushing sensation? If you don't, try it again. If you do, just hold it. So for those people that don't feel anything, rub your hands together, rub your hands together, rub your hands together. Create that friction. Pull your hands apart just like that. And everybody, let's go like this and feel that energy. I feel like a magnetic pull, like a pushing, like a pull. Keep that energy going. Do you still feel that energy brick or that energy block in between your hands? Welcome to the world of energy. If you want to look it up, also look up Reiki, R-E-I-K-I. -E -I. It's a wonderful healing art. Pull your hands apart even more. We're going to give ourselves a hug. And when we give ourselves a hug, we're going to say, I love you. Me. We want the kids to do this too, to make sure that they have love for themselves. So everybody ready? One, two, three. I love you, me. Rub your hands together, rub your hands together, rub your hands together, rub your hands together. Pull your hands apart just like that. And give yourself a belly hug. At more the internal belly than the external. Everybody say, I love you, belly. Awesome sauce. And rub your hands together, rub your hands together, rub your hands together, rub your hands together. One more time. And now create an energy bubble around you. Because, you know, sometimes there might be some people around that they don't even know. They have some energy that you don't want. And you create an energy bubble and you step into that bubble. And now everybody take a big belly breath in and a big belly breath out. And a big belly breath in and a big belly breath out. Awesome. All right. Now go grab yourself a seat because we're going to have a little conversation while you relax. This whole entire 45 minutes is not going to be all movement because I don't have expectations for you to do it. Sit time. All right. So pop quiz. Answer these three questions as quick as you can. When I say up, you say. When I say left, you say. When I say stop, you say, did you say the opposite? You all have oppositional defiance disorder. Congratulations. I know, it's silly. But we're designed initially to be oppositional, and we don't even realize it. Imagine going into a store, and you want to go shopping, and you're going to look for something, and the person that's paid to help you find what you need comes up to you and says, can I help you do something? Can I help you find what you're looking for? What's your immediate response? Oh, no. No, oh, I'm good. And then they walk away and you're thinking in your head, why did I just do that? I could probably really use their help. We are designed to be oppositional and it's just the way that we are because the way that we're programmed. If you notice, because of the way that we are, sometimes we get stuck in programs. Have you ever been driving and all of a sudden 10 minutes go by and you don't even realize that all of a sudden you're at your exit? That's a program. Your body takes over. How many of you, when you're driving, the sign says two miles on the right is your exit, and you immediately move over and sit in traffic for two miles as opposed to driving past it? You love falling into patterns. One of the patterns that I've seen the most that human beings have done is the pattern of an expectation, and it's a program 
that gets us upset. And here's the worst part of it. When we get upset, we think that it affects other people. It really only affects yourself. Have you ever heard somebody say, uh, holding a grudge or being angry at somebody else is like you drinking poison, waiting for them to die? Have you heard that? Or have you ever seen like Jim Carrey has a new show on uh, Showtime, two seasons called Kidding, and his daughter asks him, re his, he's divorced, his daughter asks him, why don't you hate mom's new boyfriend? And Jim Carrey looks at her and says to her, anger doesn't hurt who you think it does. See, we change our body's chemistry and we change our body based on our emotions and our energy. I mean, have you ever gotten upset at somebody on the TV and all of a sudden that you, the channels change and you're still upset and they don't even know you exist? How does that benefit you? How does it benefit you? Have you ever gotten upset at a child for them doing something, but you're the one that's upset and the child leaves? So one of the biggest things that we do as human beings is we create expectations. Think about a person in your life. I'll give you three to five seconds. Okay, got him. Awesome. Have you ever created an expectation for that person or another person? Okay, most likely we have. Have you ever created an expectation for that person, never shared the expectation with them, and when they don't fulfill the expectation that, you, that they know nothing about, who do we automatically get upset at? Right, we get upset at them. How does that make any sense whatsoever? How many of you have expectations of the parents of your kids? Expectations like they'll pick their kids up on time. Expectations like, you know, they'll call you back. How many of you have expectations of a parent that is not going to just walk in and when they walk out and they buckle their kid up, they hand them an iPad? See, we do that all the time. How many of you have expectations of other things in your life? How many of you? drive to work in the morning and you're surprised that there's school buses how many of you if it takes you 25 minutes to get to work you leave 25 minutes before you have to be there and then if there's traffic or if there's construction you know construction how dare they actually use my tax dollars to help me so the roads are better so we have all these different things if i gave you an option to start everything in your life 15 minutes early including waking up you can create a story in your mind that you need those 15 minutes, but I promise you, if you use those 15 minutes and things show up and there's traffic or whatever it is, if you get to work 15 minutes early, you can breathe, you can relax, you're not going to make decisions, especially driving, that are crazy. We have so many automatic programs that run us continuously. Like how many of you have ever been driving and then you see somebody walking and they're crossing the street? but we make up, they're crossing the street in front of me because we've been trained that us and ourselves are the most important thing. When you go outside, does it rain or does it rain on you? Be honest, all right, do you get what I'm saying? So imagine you're driving and then all of a sudden you see somebody walking. So what do you think? Like, oh, they're trying to cross the street in front of me. What do you think? They sat there for 10 minutes and they're like, nope, I'll let this car pass. I'll let this car pass. I'll let, oh, I like your car. Now I'm gonna start walking. And then your immediate response as an intelligent adult is to speed up to let them know that they almost got hit. If you're laughing, you know you do this. You speed up to let them know they almost got hit but if they stop and sneeze, you hit them. You're going to jail. How does that make sense? How many of you ever recognize automatic pattern? Remember, we're stuck in our programs. I said up, you said down. I said left, you say right. I said stop, you said go. I've never done a keynote or a workshop where when I said up, I actually heard somebody agree with me. I've never heard somebody say up. When I say left, I hear across the audience right. Nobody ever says left. I would hear it, it would be different. I would say I would take out that person to dinner and find out why they were able to actually break out of their immediate oppositional patterns and program because maybe they had something happen in their life. Does that make sense? All right, that's fine. Let's get to breathing. Ready? So we did enough talking. Everybody, next breathing we're going to do now that we calm ourselves down is called fire breathing. So fire breathing excites your body and ignites that internal fire within. So what you do is you take your hand, you put it over your mouth, just like this. Not over your kid's mouth, you put it over your mouth, okay? So you take your mouth, hand, put it over your mouth, 
and then you're just gonna breathe in and out with your nose. We're gonna start off slow, and then we're gonna go faster. And if you do it, what's gonna happen is your stomach and your belly and the breathing mechanism will actually take over, so you won't have to think about it. So ready, I'll, I'll do it by example first. I'm messing up my yoga mat. Okay, ready, and watch. And breathe in. How many of you feel like there's tingling through your body? How many of you feel energized? How many of you started slower and did it? Who, who kept up with me even at the same pace that I did? Oh, and before you do this, make sure you blow your nose. I kind of forgot to mention that. I'm just kidding. Okay. Another type of breathing that we're going to learn is called Wim Hof breathing. All the reasons I'm teaching you this breathing is because we don't really know that there's all different types of breathing for different situations. And breath and air, just as important as water that we don't drink enough of and air that we don't breathe of are the things that are going to help us be healthier and be safer. That and being in that beautiful sun that exists. All right. So I'm going to teach you different types of breathing so you can try it. Wim Hof is a gentleman. He's called the Iceman. W-I-M last name Hawk, H-O-F. He climbed Mount Everest in his shorts. He swims under oceanic ice water because he tells his body that it's not going to be susceptible to the cold. Him and a bunch of people went to a country in Africa and got injected with malaria and showed no symptoms because he oxygenates his brain and he takes in so much that it alkalizes, his alkalinizes, I think I said it right the first time, his brain and you feel amazing. So Wim Hof breathing is like this. You breathe in like you're sucking in with a straw or as hard as you can in. And then when you breathe out, you just go just like that. So ready? I'll do three. Ready? All right. When you do it, what happens is you oxygenate your brain. And then right after we're done, we're going to go for 10. After we're done, we're gonna take one huge deep breath in and try to hold it for as long as you can. Notice what your mind is telling you that you can or you can't do this. How does it work for you and how does it benefit you to listen to that voice in your head? Got it? All right, so Wim Hof breathing, breathing in deep with everything that we have and then just letting a little air out. Ready? I'm gonna do 10, you do as many as you can. Ready, set, and after you're done with the 10 or five, hold your breath, deep breath in first. Ready? Set, go. Let all the air out. And what do you feel? By the way, that's my mascot, Scrumpy. He's keeping security low down here. Okay, so that's Wim Hof breathing. If you feel a little lightheaded, if you feel more energized, that's what happens when the body intakes all this oxygen. Here's the thing. It's hard for us to remember how to take a deep breath in because we don't like to be told how to take a deep breath. Remember we talked about being oppositional? Have you ever gotten into an argument or a conversation that gets heated with your significant other and they look at you and they say, honey, relax. You, of course, go, oh, Thank you, dear. Let's continue the conversation. No, you lose your mind because another person's telling you what to do. What if they said to you, sweetie, take a breath. You'll feel better. Are you going to go, oh, okay, hold on a second. I'm going to do Wim Hof breathing. No, we're not going to do that. Okay, so we get upset when people tell us what to do. So when you're telling your kids, how many of you have ever done this? One of your kids is doing the fake crying, and they're doing, and you're hovering over them, like, relax, take a breath, breathe in. There's a tour coming. The state's here. I need this job. And you're, like, hovering over this kid. See, it doesn't make sense. Scruffy, are you taking over the Ugarati class? Everyone say, hi, Scruffy. That's a talented dog. All right, so we did Wim Hof breathing, we did big belly breathing, we did fire breathing. Let's do some karate, okay? So when we do yoga karate, what we're gonna do is we're going to step one foot back, bend your knees, hands up in your ready stance, just like that. Everybody go, ayah! 
All right, awesome. Let's try it again. So put your feet together. Now, do I want you to have one foot, all your, both your feet together, or do I want you to have one foot back? All right, good. Ready? If you're listening, hands in the air. If you're listening, touch your nose. If you're listening, touch your knees. Just going to let go. Go. Just going to let my dog eat in. Okay. Awesome. And let's do that again. I like the way you have one foot back. I like the way you have one foot back. Now, do I want your elbows out like chickens or do I want your elbows in like kangaroos? So what those are are preframes. I use them in my behavior management system because I don't like to tell kids what to do, just like you don't like to be told to relax. You don't like to be told to take a breath. So I do, I like the way. I like the way you have one foot forward. I like the way you have one foot back. I do auditory preframes where I say in a different tone of voice, do I want your elbows out like chickens? And I also do visual ones where you see what I'm doing with my head. Or do I want your elbows in like kangaroos? Just like that. Awesome. So ready? The high block song goes to Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Ready? So let's sing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star together. Ready, set, go. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Up above the squirrel so high. Like a pepperoni pizza pie. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder, dude, where's my car? Did you think, think I was going to sing it the regular way? Did you, when I said we're going to sing the high block song, we're going to sing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, did you go, oh, and then I change it up. So those are called pattern interrupts. They're ways to trick the brain to get attention. Like if I walk into a classroom and none of the kids are paying attention instead of saying come on joey come on bailey come on stacy i just go Woof! and then all of a sudden every single kid looks at me and then i say do i want you running do i want you sitting crisscross applesauce i like the way you're sitting crisscross i like the way you're sitting crisscross does that make sense all right awesome and all this stuff will be in the handouts okay so now we're gonna do is we're gonna do the high block song we're gonna tell the story so the story is i was sitting under a tree and i was reading a book and all of a sudden i felt something hit me on top of my head and i looked up and it was a squirrel, and it dropped a couple of nuts. So I thought it was an accident. I ignored it, and all of a sudden, oh, hit me on my head again. I looked up, I said, Mr. Squirrel, why are you throwing your nuts at me? And he just went, because he didn't speak English. So all of a sudden, he kept on dropping the nuts on my head, and I put my hand up like this. And when I put my hand up like this, I noticed that the nuts weren't hitting my head. They were hitting my arm. So I realized every single time that I put my hand up in the air, I'm protecting the top of my head. And that explains to the kids so they understand what they're doing. So the first part is you sing nursery rhyme that goes with the song. And you can go on to yogarati.com or go into my YouTube page. And there's over 30 videos. You can just sing along with it. Hands up like this. The high block song sounds like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Ready, set, sing it with me if you know it. If not, there's a chorus. Go. High block, high block to the sky. High block, high block, way up high. Aya! The I is the chorus. Okay? All right, let's try it again. Everybody bend your knees. Hands up just like this. Ready, set, go. High block, high block to the sky. High block, high block, way up high. Aya! Nice. All right, give yourself a high five. Give me a high five. Awesome, now we're gonna do it one more time. This time, use a silly voice. Silly voices are what I also use when I'm doing pattern interrupts. If I walk into the classroom and I say, I want all the kids' attention, I don't care if I have 30 kids, I don't care if I'm doing a student assembly of 250 kids. If I start going, would you like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Every single kid looks old, makes sense? Or do any sort of accents, doesn't matter. If I do Irish, if I do Scottish, if I do Australian, if I do British, by the way, I'm not auditioning for SNL. Lord Michaels isn't watching this. So just be silly and goofy and the kids will appreciate it. Now, what does the voice in your head say? Did you automatically hear that oppositional no? Or are you excited actually to do voices? Make sense? All right, ready stands. Aya! Do I want your feet together? Do I want your feet open? Do I want your elbows out like chickens? Or do I want your elbows in like kangaroos? I like the way your knees are bent. I like the way your knees are bent. Those are all the free frames that work amazingly. Ready, set, go. Boy block, boy block to the sky. Boy block, boy block, way up high. Aya! Awesome. Now, what I usually do is I have boppers, pads, or things like that, but we're virtual. So we're going to do some virtual martial arts. I'm going to try to come at you and try to 
bop you on your head just like this. And whenever I try to bop you, let's say I'm even trying to bop you right in your nose, all I want you to do is with the corresponding hand, I want you to do a block. So ready, hands up like this. And if I go like this, you do a block. And then we're gonna do one more song to make it more challenging, ready? If I go like this, good job with your high block. If I go like this, good job with your high block. You ready? I like the way you're alternating your high blocks. I'm gonna challenge you up a little bit. Nice. Good. Good job. Did you high block, high block, high block? Awesome. All right. Let's keep going with some stretching. I wanna stretch out my hamstrings. The reason why I like to stretch out my hamstrings is because I learned a long time ago, back in the personal training days, that your hamstrings have a lot to do with your lower back. Anybody here have any lower back pain? Just a couple of, okay, then everybody else just have a seat and ignore it. Just kidding, this is for you. So if you have lower back pain, it's usually because your hamstrings are too tight or your glutissimus maximus cardashianus hasn't been stretched out in a while, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first stretch out our hamstrings by doing dynamic stretching like we're doing in the opening stretching. That's called silly stretching, it's on the YouTube thing. So ready, let's continue the silly stretching. We're gonna peck for some seeds like a bunch of chickens. Everybody go like this, everybody go peck, peck, peck. Peck. Now make your chicken noises. One more time. All right, good. Now become monkeys. And let's pick some bananas like a bunch of monkeys. Everybody go pick, 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 pick. And we're doing chicken pecks. Peck, 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 uh, why are you picking your noses? That's disgusting. It's an optical illusion, just letting you know. It's like this. Ever do this one? Fun at parties. Okay, do you know the rules of noses that we learned in school? You can pick your friends and you can pick your nose, but you can't pick your friend's nose without permission. Make sense? Write that down. Awesome. Teach it to your kids. Okay, good. All right, now we're going to work on some ankle and some balancing. Because I don't want anybody to be this person. Have you ever been this person or seen this person that they're just walking, all of a sudden your ankle twists and you look behind you at the looking for the, the nothing that you tripped on? Ever had that hop happen? Well, that's because we're not taught to strengthen our ankle. How many times do you go to the gym and the trainer or the person that sets you up with the orientation said, do your wrist exercises, do your ankle exercises? That's why we also do uh, exercise for the knees as well, which is what's gonna happen here. So what I'm gonna have you do is everybody, I want you just to balance on your right foot, lift your knee up, five to 10 seconds. We're gonna try to count to 10. That's it, just like that. When I say go, ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, keep balancing. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Awesome. Now, this time, instead of balancing, on your left foot, I want you to drum on your right foot. And the more that you drum on your right foot, the higher your knee comes up. Does that make sense? So if I drum like this, it comes up like this. If I drum like this, if I'm drumming, ready, start drumming. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. All right, awesome. Put your foot down. How many of you were able to balance better the second time? But you were balancing on the same foot. Why do you think? Think about it for two seconds. What were you focusing on when you were balancing on this leg? You're focusing on not falling over. What were you focusing on when you're here? You're focusing on drumming. Anybody ever weight tables? What do they tell you to do with a whole armful full of trays? They tell you to look at it or they tell you to replace. They tell you to look at it or to keep on going. They tell you to keep going because if you look at it, you might focus on dropping. So a good lesson in life is if you focus on what could go wrong, it might go wrong. If you just focus on what's gonna go right, instead of worrying about the 95% of things that we worry about that usually don't even happen, then life will be better. I promise you, just try it out. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. All right, let's do another yogarati technique. Everybody step back. Actually, you know what? Let's just do the, the let's do something else. I wanna do a little more yoga. So we're gonna do what's called the sun salutation. Okay, so I like the way you're standing. I like the way you're standing. This is going to be the most movement that we're going to do. Okay, so everybody big belly breath in, big belly breath out. And we are going to go down to the floor. So just give me that heads up. So make sure that you got enough room behind you. Big belly breath in, big belly breath out. 
Awesome. Ready? I shape a circle. I like the way that you're saying the words. I like the way that you're saying the words. Then one more. Big belly breath in. Big belly breath out. <sighs> nice. I fold in half. Aren't you glad we stretch out our hamstrings? And touch the floor. Everybody go touch, 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 touch. Good. Breathe in. And breathe out. <sighs> All right, now start drumming on your shins. Start drumming, everybody, start drumming on your shins. Oh, I'm Mr. Red, and I see my horse friends coming. Put your hands on your knees, stretch your neck out like a long horse. Big belly breath in, let's do some horse noises. <laughs> let's do one more. This one's a shout out to uh, Vera Delmira, Jim Carrey's character in Living Color. Breathe in. <laughs> By the way, if you're being silly, good for you. Are you being this silly with your kids? You know your kids just want to play. Would you rather be entertained by me or would you rather be educated by me? Most people would rather be entertained. What do you think your kids want? Just kind of keep an eye on them. All right, so after we did our horses, I hope you didn't repeat that whole entire thing. I kick my feet back and drop right away, just like that. Big belly breath in, big belly breath out. <sighs> nice job. Now, I pull myself forward. So you're actually gonna pull your body forward, leaving your belly and leaving your pelvis on the ground and let out a hiss. So big belly breath in, <gasps> everybody go. Awesome job. I lift my body to the sky. So lift your bottom up in the air like this, like a doggy, like this. Big belly breath in. Everyone go roof, 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 roof. Nice job. Okay. I drop to my knees and I breathe dragon's fire. So you have two hands on the ground. You have two knees on the ground. This is where I teach kids the beauty of making mistakes. How many of you were taught that making a mistake is not good? Think about this. When you're driving your car and you're driving in a straight line, how do you drive with your hands on the wheel? Do you just go like this or are your hands going like this? They're going like this. They're going like this. Even a handlebar, explain to your kids. They're riding a bicycle in a straight line. They're not just going like this. They go this, this, this. This is a mistake. Mistake, correction. Mistake, correction. Mistake, correction. Mistake, correction. Driving. Mistake, correction. Mistake, correction. Mistake, correction. Do we get mad at every single mistake? No. The reason why is because we have not done what we always do. We have not created an expectation that we would drive straight. We know that when driving or riding a bicycle, we always make mistakes and we're okay with that. So what if you took that into your life? What if you took that into your teaching? You're gonna make mistakes with your kids, mistakes in life, mistakes in relationships. Are you gonna dwell on mistakes or are you gonna focus on just doing the best that you can because who can do more than the best that they can? So here we do with our dragon fire, we have two knees on the ground, two hands on the ground. First of all, we say, stick out your dragon tongue, okay? And then we say, stick out your dragon tail, just like that. So now bring in your dragon tongue, see my tail, bring in your dragon tail. So I have my opposite arm, opposite leg off the ground. Some of you may be going like this, that's awesome, literally. Mistake, body corrects. Mistake, body corrects. Mistake, body corrects. Just like that. That's all you got to do. Teach your kids how wonderful it is to make mistakes and show them. So ready? Let's try it again. Stick out your dragon tongue. Bring it in. Stick out your dragon tail. Bring it in. Big belly breath in. When I say go, you're going to go Rawr! as loud as you want. Big belly breath in. Ready, set, dragon fire, go. Rawr! All right, is that the loudest you can yell? I know that's not the loudest I can yell, and I have neighbors looking at me weird, but that's okay, because um, I love it. Put the other hand up, other hand like this, pull your dragon tail in, lift up your dragon tail, pull your dragon tail in, big belly breath in, enjoy all the mistakes, and dragon fire! <laughs> nice, open your knees, put your feet together, I curl up, like a little mouse, so everybody breathe in and go squeak, squeak, squeak. Or try to make a mouse noise because the kids will love it more by sucking in through your teeth that are together like this. Ready, try it. Big belly breath in, 
And let's do some nice tweaks. Awesome. And I stand up tall, like a big strong house. And they have to show me your muscles. Go like this, yeah. And I reach, and I reach, and I reach for my toes. Everybody grab your toes. Try to stand up while you're holding up your toes. Feel your back stretch. Oh, I just felt the vertebrae. And I stand up slow, breathe in, and do a happy pose. Yes! You did awesome. All right, we got one more thing we're going to do, and then we're going to wrap it up. Everybody grab a quick drinky poo. And remember, if you're watching this on Facebook, or you're just watching and you want to sign up for the entire amazing conference, go to this link, go.nhsa.org forward slash virtual, if you can see it. All right. Last thing that we're going to do is cold breathing, okay? That's a breathing that calms our bodies down. So when we do cold breathing, it cools us. So let's review. We went over big belly breathing. We went over fire breathing. We went over Wim Hof breathing. And then we're going to go over cold breathing. Did we go over one more? No, I think that was it. Okay. So when you do cold breathing, what you do is you take your tongue, you put it behind the back of your bottom teeth like this. Okay. So everybody's tongue to be behind the back of the bottom teeth just like that, okay? What we, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that you're doing it right by practicing doing the princess bride test. If you don't know what that is, we're gonna do it now. So take your tongue, put it behind the back of your bottom teeth. Everybody, repeat after me. Waz. Good. Two waz. Nice. It's a magical experience. Okay, everybody say princess bride Okay, awesome. So now keep your tongue behind the back of your bottom teeth and now breathe in and breathe out. And keep your tongue down, breathe in and breathe out. So what do you feel? Do you feel like a cooling sensation going through your body? You do, so that's cold breathing, awesome. All right, so remember, I want to say, first of all, thank you so much to the National Head Start Association for giving me this honor to warm everybody up with Yogarati. Uh, you can find me, look up Yogarati, find my name, all my information's on the, on the portal. And I just want to ask one more thing. Remember how we're stuck? Let's see if anything shifted. When I say up, you say, oh. When I say left, you say, wait. When I say stop, you say, stop? So you're agreeing with me now? So wait a minute. I showed you a pattern that you were stuck in and you didn't even realize that you were stuck in it. And within 45 minutes, you unstuck yourself from a pattern that's probably existed the majority of your life. That is amazing. That is called freeing your mind. For the rest of the conference and for the rest of the days, all I want you to do it's just notice when you create expectations, when you say the word should. When you say he should be this way, she should be this way, society should be this way, our, our, our president, everything should be this way. Notice the expectation you're creating in your mind and how you get upset about it. So on the last thing I'm going to share with you, stop shooting all over each other. S-H-O-U-L-D. Should. I appreciate everyone. We're going to end with... The same way we start the class, everybody in a mask. Everybody go, Aya! Have an amazing rest of your day, everyone. I appreciate you all.